morning, everyone. We thank God for this new day and the opportunity to contemplate the changes of this season one more time. The fall is a beautiful time to celebrate the life and reflect on the importance of the renovation of moving forward. I appreciate the patience and help that you give me every, with every correction to learn to pronounce every word correctly every week. But I have good news for you. Tomorrow, precisely at 11 a.m., I begin the English class with my new tutor. I uh, appreciate your prayers. In my favor, forgot to open my ears and accommodate my tongue in this process. Uh, but today, my petition is that God opens your spiritual ear to listen all that he wants to tell you and open your physical ears to correct, to correct the pastor when pronouncing a word incorrectly to continue to learn in this adventure of faith and service to God together. Um, I want to invite you to open the Bible in Matthew 22 in the reading scripture of John read a few minutes ago because it's in this verse where we work in this morning. The best title for the sermon today is Jer Jesus. Today, more than ever, the Church of God need to share the good news of the Jesus Christ to all people in this world. One of the most distinctive signs of a disciple of Jesus, unlike the followers of other religions in the world, is what he has to share with those around him. In this day, while many share hatred, revenge, sacrifice, resentment, and indifference toward their neighbor, the follower of Jesus is the only one qualified with a special power from above to share love, forgiveness, opportunity, reconciliation, and a living faith that transcends everything imaginable. The Lord Jesus Christ already glorified as the rising from the dead and before ascending to heaven together with the glory of the Father, gave the ordinance to his disciples and followers that we go along the path of life sharing all the things that have been shared with us. The best representation of for Jesus was the living testimony of each of his disciples in every corner of this world, a testimony that transcends all the barriers and obstacles that man has raised and continue to raise against his neighbor. Sharing Jesus goes far beyond sharing theoretical teaching from the Bible or in the field of theology. Sharing Jesus is sharing the hope that the gospel one day brought into our life and change our eternal destiny forever. Sharing Jesus is making a new opportunity available for everyone who has failed and who 
carry the consequences of shame and defeat on their shoulders. Sharing Jesus is sharing life in the midst of a world where death is a reality in all its forms, physical, spiritual, and emotional. Thousands and thousands of people pass through this world full of sadness and hopelessness. Hopelessness. Because they have not been able to find the fullness of living the abundant life that Christ offers. Sin has had, among other things, the loneliness of the soul that it tried to satisfy by filling it with vanities and realities that are temporary and fleeting because they are of this world. As creatures made in the image and likeliness of the eternal God, we are created to have a close and intimate relationship with our Creator, a relationship that the sin destroyed by, by adding pain, sadness, loneliness, and guilt into this relationship. I want to share a few words from the preacher in Ecclesiastes chapter 2, where he described trying to fill that void with things from this finite and mortal world by saying in the next verse. Verse 3. Oh, this scripture has a very complicated word for me. Give me patience. I tried cheering myself. The, the preacher is speaking. I tried cheering myself with wine and embracing fully, my mind is still guiding me with wisdom. I wanted to see what was good for people to do under the heavens during the few days of their lives. I undertook great projects. I built houses for myself and planted vineyards. I made gardens and parks and planted all kinds of fruit trees in them. I made, made reservoirs to water growth of flourishing trees. I both male and female slaves and had other slaves who were born in my house. I also own more hair and flocks than anyone in Jerusalem before me. I amazed silver and gold for myself and the treasure of kings and province. I acquired male and female singers and a heron as well, the delights of a man's heart. I became greater by far than anyone, anyone in Jerusalem before me. In all this, my wisdom stay with me. I deny myself nothing my eyes desire. I refuse my heart no pleasure. My heart took delight in all my labor, and this was the reward for all my toil. Yet, when I survived all that my hand had done and what I had told to achieve, everything was meaningless. A chasing after the wind, nothing was gained under the sun. The preacher tries to share his personal experience, showing us that everything that the world offers us will never satisfy the hunger and thirst within us, because only the presence of God can do that. 
at the end of his dissertation in chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, he ends his statement by saying, now all has been heard. Here is the conclusion of the matter. Fear God and keep his commandment, for it is duty of all mankind. For God will bring every deed into judgment, including every hidden thing, whether it is good or evil. He is our life experience led him to understand that true wisdom and fulfillment was in fearing God and living in his commandments, which is where he found peace, comfort, encouragement, and hope. Thinking about the day of his reunion with the creator on the day of final judgment. Let him to understand what was truly important and what was temporary and remained in this world. When the religious wanted to test Jesus about what was most important to him, Jesus responded by saying that loving God with all our strength is the most important thing in our spiritual experience. Let me this morning, I would like to invite you to share four spiritual principles that we find in this teaching of the master, which we are, we are called to share everyone to the last corner of this world. First of all, dear Jesus, always loving God first with all our strength above everything else. Always loving God first with all our strength above everything else. In Lamentations, Chapter 3, verse 24, the Bible said, I say to myself, the Lord is my portion. Therefore, I will wait for him. When the religious want to test Jesus about what is the more important to him, Jesus responds one more time again that loving God with all our strength, with all your heart, your, with all your mind is the more important in the spiritual experience. It is not in vain that Jesus tell his followers that to follow him, we have to renounce everything in this world. During his earthly ministry, he thought about the unhappiness of a divided heart, because those who have it do not end up being sincere and faithful to either party, trying to place other sin and compete with God, minimize his glory to the level of the superficial and fleeting realities of this world. The Apostle Paul tells the Philippians that the day he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, all things became trash because because nothing compares with the glory, majesty, and greatness of God. And Paul was able to realize that. Paul understood due to his own life experience 
that religion was not enough to please God, but it was necessary to have a real and sincere faith, a faith that is spread through weaknesses and defects, problems and conflict, success and achievement, an achievement of faults and failure, no matter our surround, surrounding reality. Walking by faith with God is walking safely and confidently, knowing that he is always present. It is understanding that I can move forward each day without fear because he is in control of all things. It is believing that his constant guidance and assistance are enough for me. It is living in each of his promise that drive me to take the next step reliably and safely without the fear of making mistakes. A living faith is not something material that can be acquired with money, but rather it comes from the deep experience and a constant walk with God. Sadly, many people use the Christian faith as a fire truck that comes to put out a sporadic fire and nothing more. Sadly, the Christianity of the 21st century is seeking the experience that satisfies the needs of the sense rather than the will of God. When we love God above all things, our faith is challenged and we strive to please him more every day and to serve him faithfully in all areas of our lives. The high levels of narcissism and hedonism that the world offers us at every turn do not confuse, disorient, or discourage us because our love for God is loyal and sincere. The Apostle Paul speaks of that experience of fullness in his life in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 23, when he says, the fullness of him fills everything in everything. In second place, share Jesus teaching the commandments of God and not the traditions of men. Teaching the commandments of God and not the traditions of men. The same reading in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, and 17, Rudy, you read better of me this verse. <laughs> All the scripture is God breathed, 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 and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness, so that servant of God may be thoroughly Thoroughly, thank you. Equipped for every good work. Equipped. I need your help every week. Thank you, thank you. One of the things that the multitude that followed Jesus had was the difference that he had with the religious people of his time. On several, several occasions, 
people were surprised because Jesus was consistent between what he said and did, thought and lived, and challenged and shared. In Matthew chapter 7, verse 28 and 29, it says, When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowd were amazed at his teaching because he thought as one who had authority and not as their teacher of the law. A sincere work with God gives us an experience that weighs more than thousands of words repeat by heart, like a parrot without understanding what it is saying. We were, we were called to share God's commandments and not our personal experience, whether mystical or rational. Traditions are not bad in themselves. The problem is when we incorporate them to be normative and authoritative in our life experience. There are family, cultural, academic, and social traditions that are very good for keeping the origins of our identity present. But it is a very different thing when these traditions take a place of authority over God. The problem of falling into the trap of traditions is that there is a danger of being close to the hypocrisy and religiosity live before my men and not before God. You can be a moral person with ethical and religious principles, but is, if love for our neighbors is not present, we lack integrity between the message we are preaching and the one we are living. Jesus, among the many authoritative, authoritative uh, teachings that he shared, said that the summary of our experience and love toward God, toward God is reflected in our love toward our neighbor. We cannot say that we love God and despise our neighbor. Because one of the first manifestation of the fruit of the Holy Spirit is love. Because the essence of God is love. From there, we understand our condition and need to review whether our daily walk dignifies and exalts God. Paul tells the Colossians in chapter 1, verse 10, that there are three things that dignify our testimony before others, saying, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of God. Pleasing him in everything speak of our integrity and allow our testimony of life to be genuine, authentic, and faithful to him. Bearing fruit in every good work explain how we should be an efficient service and be an instrument of blessing to others. Growing in the knowledge of God speaks of our passion to become more and more like Jesus every day 
in all areas of our lives. In first place, dear Jesus, sowing the hope of reconciliation with God that the gospel offered through the cross. Church Jesus, so in the hope of reconciliation with God that the gospel offered through the cross. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 15 and 16, Jesus said, Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. The hope of the cross is the only hope the world needs to hear, obtain an experience to find true peace, true and real peace. The heart of men cannot find true peace except through Jesus Christ, because the payment of sin and disobedience says the word of God in the epistle to the Romans in chapter 3 is death, pain, sadness, anguish, loneliness, indifference, selfishness, confusion, and disenchantment. Reconciliation has to do with something that has been broken and altered from its original condition. But the biblical term has to do with putting something that has been broken back together. Our world suffers from the pain that we see daily because the hearts of many remain broken and aren't able to find that healing of the soul that the cross offered to the sinner. This rupture cannot be solved with religiosity, good works, psychology, or philanthropy. Only the wounds of the land sacrificed on the cross can heal the wounds of a soul far from God. Reconciliation with God is the only hope that the sinner finds, which allows him to escape from his condition of death and embrace the forgiveness of God in Jesus Christ. Sowing the hope of the cross is a sowing that must be done urgently because the enemy of our soul continue to oppress children, young people, adults, and elderly to deprive them of the love of God. The message of the gospel of Jesus is good news because it brings life in the midst of death. Hope in the midst of chaos opportunities in the midst of failure, and freedom in the midst of slavery. Jesus said that if we truly love God, that love must be reflected in our service to our neighbor, and that love has to be shared in every step of the way, every day, of our lives. And final place and fourth, dear Jesus, living in the fullness of love towards a neighbor who needs 
to experience something different. Living in the fullness of love toward a neighbor who needs to experience something different. In Acts 20 verse 24, however, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. It's beautiful, this. However, I consider my life worth nothing to me. My only aim is to finish the race and complete the task the Lord Jesus has given me. The task of testifying to the good news of God's grace. A few months ago, uh, I share a story, but I, I need to repeat that story again. Uh, when one child uh, insistently, uh, insistently uh, told with his father to accompany him to distribute distribute evangelistic tracts uh, to the houses around uh, town, uh, around his house. His father, who was tired from the long and heavy routine of the week, asked his son to please leave that for another day, since the rain did not stop early and was predict to continue till the next day. After a while, the boy returned to the living room where his father was resting and said, Dad, even through the rain continue, people need to hear about the love of God. Can I go, can I go out alone to distribute unless some leaflets Faced with such a profound proposal from his son, his father allowed him to go out, but only to walk through the street near his house and to return in less than an hour before it got dark. The boy put on his jacket and rain boots and went out happy and encouraged to sow the seed of the life that the gospel Jesus offered. From house to house, he went knocking on door to give the tract uh, in, in his hand and tell to the people that God loved them above all things. At one of the many doors he knocked on, a woman appeared who upon Hearing those words from the boy, but into tears and thanked him for his visit. On Sunday morning, the woman attended attend the church worship and shared her testimony, saying that that week she had through about taking her life because nothing made sense to her anymore. She took advantage of the rainy and lonely, lonely day to prepare a noose in the attic to end her life. While she was on top of the chair and placing the robe over her neck, she heard a knock on her door. After a few seconds, when he not, did not stop, she decided to go see who it was. And it was there when she saw the child 
who share a portion of the Holy Scripture with her and told her that God loved her. Those words and that text helped her to see that there was still hope for her in the midst of her sadness. And that her presence that day was a testimony of God's love, thanks to the testimony of a simple child. This story, which can be real or fictional, remind us of the importance that we have as follower and disciple of Jesus so that the fire of evangelism is always present in our lives. As we continue with our activities and agenda, thousand upon upon thousand die without hope because they have no heard of God's love. Sometimes it is a loved one, a friend, a co-worker, a student, or simple a neighbor in our neighborhood who is overcome by depression and loneliness. When the believer lives in the fullness of God's love in his life, he understands the urgency of sharing that love around him. May God help us to be instruments of peace and hope in the midst of a society that walks alone and confused on the verge of hopelessness. Thus, as children redeemed and purchased by the blood of Christ, who opened the way for us to one day reconcile our lives, our life with God, may we be agents of reconciliation to the people around us every day. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to remember his eternal love for our lives in your son, Jesus. Thank you because he went to the cross to give us a better life and clean all our sins with his holy blood. Today we remember the urgency that we have to proclaim to all the people in this world about your hope and way of life. Open our eyes to see the reality around us and to understand our responsibility in your kingdom as instrument of peace and love. Open new opportunities so that we may give our testimony to other people around us next week and serve you in fidelity and integrity every day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.